Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I do not have a full review for you this week, and I'm sorry about that. I should have a full review next week, uh, but since I don't have one for you this week, I, what I thought we might do instead is do an unboxing and assembly of a vintage G.I. Joe vehicle. This is the G.I. Joe Razor Blade. Uh, it is from 1994. I don't have very many 1994 vehicles, so this will be a learning opportunity for me. I picked this up at JoeCon. Uh, it was pretty inexpensive. Uh, it was in an open box. The box was not, uh, was not sealed, but the contents inside are still in the factory sealed bags. So we will be the first uh, to see this um, actually opened up and assembled. And once I get it assembled, uh, eventually in the future, I'll be able to do a full review on it. I have all the tools I'm likely to need to assemble this vehicle. So let's open it up and put it together. So let's see, this just opened the flap here, and these 90s vehicles all came with um, a cardboard tray inside the box. Pull that out, and we can set the box aside. Uh, just set the box over here for a second. Uh, and th this is all of our pieces here. We've got a body piece here, We've got a couple grips here. This is for the uh, the gimmick that it uh, that it had. We've got the factory sealed contents in the bag with all, all the pieces still on the plastic trees. Looks like quite a few uh, pieces. Uh, another piece of the body, um, and it looks like that that's a spring-loaded missile launcher uh, and some skids for it. So uh, those are all the pieces. Um, looks like all the ephemera is still here. Uh, we've got a catalog. I guess this would be the 1994 catalog. Uh, so these are kind of fun to look at, uh, but I won't spend a whole lot of time looking at it right now. Uh, it's got the Hall of Fame 12 inch figures here. Uh, that's something I've thought about taking a look at, although it's outside the normal scope of my reviews and my collection, but it still might be fun to look at. Um, this is a catalog here, and here's this is pretty cool. Uh, on this page, it has Create a Cobra, and on this page, it has the Goldhead Steel Brigade, where you can send off for those. Those are both very rare and expensive figures now, so it's kind of cool to see the catalog where you can mail off to get them. Uh, so uh, let's set those aside for now. We have the instruction sheet um, with the assembly instructions. This is pretty different from our uh, 80s and even the early 90s uh, instruction sheets. Um, the blueprints are uh, very much abbreviated, but uh, let's just put it together. Uh, oh, yeah, here, probably the most important part, the sticker sheet uh, with all the stickers on it. So uh, let's uh, set the cardboard tray aside and let's look at step one. Uh, the step one is the tail fin assembly. Uh, place tail fin on back end of lower body half uh, with tail fin holes positioned over posts as shown. Tail fin, I guess, uh, oh, I think it is time. Um, I believe the tail fin is in here in this factory sealed bag. So all you uh, collectors who like to keep uh, the vintage toys in their factory sealed uh, bags, uh, just cover your eyes because we're cutting it open right now. And there we've done it. We've done it. It will never be sealed again. Uh, okay, let's take these parts out and find that tail piece. Let's see. I believe I see it. All right, there's the canopy. It looks like some wheels. Uh, and that looks like the tail. Okay, so we've got to cut that piece off of the plastic tree. Let's try to do this cleanly. There we go. Oh, that, piece, that bit's already cut. There we go. All right. All right. Oh, whoops, I missed one piece. Can I just snap it off? Yeah. Okay. There's the tail piece, and where's the bottom half? This is the bottom half of the body. We're supposed to put it in this configuration and place the tail. I see there's a post right here, and then there's like a little C-clip that fits around this post. 
Uh, it just goes on like that. Could not be simpler. There's the tail. And then uh, step two, it says to put the body together. So um, align upper half of the body um, posts with lower half holes. Uh, start at the back end. Secure tail, fin, and body halves in place by snapping posts into holes. So, all right, I got it. Um, this looks pretty straightforward. Snapping the top and body halves together. Now, we've done a few of these assemblies before. And we know that just because it looks straightforward and easy and simple doesn't mean that it is. So let's try to put this together without breaking it. And of course, it doesn't want to easily align. Of course not. It couldn't be easy. So let's just keep working with it until it snaps together. OK. OK, yeah, there we go. Snap together okay all right everything is aligned okay we got through step two uh, and there is the the shell basically uh, step three says to put the landing skids assembly so we've got the landing skids align the landing skid notch with a copter slot as shown snap landing skid assembly into bottom of copter okay so, uh, let's see, what's the front? Uh, let's see, which way is the front? Um, all right, it looks like it fits both ways, so it could fit either way. So I believe the, okay. Yeah, okay, no, that's the front. I got it, I got it. Snaps together and it should just, oh, that was incredibly easy. All right, very good. So landing skids are on. Uh, next, uh, step four is the canopy assembly. Here's the canopy. Uh, and this, it says, um, oh, okay. There are a couple of knobs here on the front, and those line up with these grooves on the canopy. And it looks like they should just slide right in. Uh, again, it looks easy, but it almost never is. Let me make sure that I'm, let's see. Um, if I do it that way, it seems like it would stretch this canopy a bit because that would be a tight fit. Uh, but there are these grooves in the canopy that this is supposed to slide right into. Um, which is not as easy as it sounds. Fortunately, the plastic on this canopy is a little bit flexible. Uh, otherwise, I would be worried about breaking it. Uh, it does flex a good bit though, so I don't think this will break. I'm not too worried about it. But this lining up the knobs in the grooves, there it goes. Took a second, but there it goes. And so it just snaps closed like that. Uh, let's see. Hoping it should be pretty easy. Oh, that actually works quite well. So congratulations, 1994. You're looking good. Um, okay. Uh, that stage also shows uh, how you can put the figure in. Uh, this didn't come with an action figure, but you could put a figure in uh, at this stage. So what's next? The rotor blade assembly. So we have some rotor blade parts to take off the trees here. Looks like, let's see, uh, with rotor blade and rotor uh, blade hub facing up, um, snap end of blade into each hub. Repeat with the other three blades. Okay. So I need to clip these rotor blade pieces off of the plastic tree. Uh, oh, there we go. Well, that one was almost off anyway. And uh, all right, four rotor blades. So let's clip each one of these off. I think my X-Acto knife might be getting a little bit dull. I may have to sharpen this thing or just replace it. It's pretty old. All right. So while we do this, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Um, I know for some of us, uh, it's been kind of tough times lately. But, uh, you know, we're going to get through it, guys. Um, we're going to get through it. Um, I certainly have had kind of a tough time uh, with my job situation, uh, changes at work that have been very 
uncomfortable and unwelcome. Uh, and, of course, I don't have a whole lot of say in that. But uh, I'm slowly adjusting the best I can. Move this, move this out of the way. So maybe you can see a little bit of the uh, rotor blade assembly. So we're supposed to have the hub facing up. That's facing up. Um, we are supposed to snap each blade into place as shown. And as shown, it goes this way. Let's see. Uh, all right. Oh, I see how it goes. And again, it's a good thing this black plastic has a little bit of flex to it. Uh, otherwise, uh, with the force I'm having to use to assemble this, um, I would worry about breaking it. But I think this black plastic is going to be fine. So uh, we've done a few live streams now. Uh, I'm trying to make that a weekly thing. Um, so how are you guys liking it? Um, I've been enjoying it a lot, um, and I hope you have too. I understand that um, the live stream uh, is not at a convenient time for everyone, especially if you're on the US uh, West Coast. Um, for you guys, it's probably a little too early. Uh, but uh, in the central time zone where I am, uh, I really kind of have to do it at that time uh, because that's the only time that's that's possible for me. Um, but I've been given some thought to uh, maybe doing one that's like late night or something like that so that uh, maybe a few people from different parts of the country and different parts of the world can join us. Uh, maybe some people who can't join the regular live stream because for you it's too early or too late. So I'll give that some thought. Um, so we're supposed to uh, have a rotor blade shaft um, and we insert the rotor blade shaft through the rotor blade hub uh, and snap uh, end of pivot shaft into top of vehicle as shown. So where is, ah there it is that's what that is. Okay. As I finish clipping the pieces off of each of these trees, I'm tossing them in the box so they are out of my way. Okay. So this is supposed to go okay, through the blades like that and then into this and that um, yeah, okay. Same on both sides, so there, that should be it. There! Oh, how about that? This thing is working. Uh, you know, these, um, some of these 90s vehicles were, uh, rather simple, uh, I'd have to say. Uh, but one nice thing about simplicity, uh, is that they are usually fairly easy to assemble, so that's not bad. That's not always the case, though, as we've seen with some of the vehicles that we've put together. Uh, okay, so now, trolley guideway assembly. That's these pieces here. It says fit posts on pulleys into lower trolley guideway half containing pulley holes. Fit slots on upper trolley guideway half through tabs on lower trolley guideway, then press and hold, uh, okay, and hold um, halves together, um, check, make sure pulleys are aligned properly, then snap halves together. Um, okay, that sounded rather complicated, but I, based on the picture in the instructions, I'm pretty sure I know, I know what I'm supposed to do. So, this thing has this gimmick where it has like a, a pulley system, and that's what we're assembling now. Um, I probably won't test that uh, in this video. I'll wait till I do a review on it to show you whether or not that pulley system works very well. But I'm quite curious, I'm pretty curious to see if that's actually gonna work. Uh, all right. Now these are the pulley wheels. There are two of them. Uh, okay, come on. Oh, 
There we go. That one didn't want to go. We got it. Okay. All right. Um, I want to thank everyone. I want to make sure everybody understands how much I appreciate uh, all their uh, support and their help lately uh, when I've kind of been going through some difficulties. Um, and uh, that's not something that I'm just going to, you know, keep harping on. Uh, but, but I do want to make sure that I, I thank everyone because everybody, everybody has been so kind and supportive. Um, and I want to make sure everyone knows how much I appreciate that. Uh, we are going to get better. Um, this is going to someday be behind us. Uh, we will be back to, you know, you know, doing good things and making good things and having fun with this again. Um, it's just one of those things. Sometimes life throws you a little curveball. All right. So that's it. That's the pulley system, completely assembled. Uh, very odd looking, but uh, we'll have to see how that works. Uh, okay, the rocket launcher. That's this right here. This is a spring-loaded missile launcher. Um, and this, how does it go? It goes, oh, interesting. Uh, Okay, uh, rocket launcher slides into right side of copter as shown. Okay, now that's really interesting. Okay, it slides, okay, it slides in here through the back, and then there's this hole. The rocket actually fires through there. So uh, that's, that's kind of different. I don't, I don't know, I think I might kind of dig that. I'm not a big fan of these spring-loaded missile launchers, but... Um, did something a little bit unique with it on this particular vehicle. Uh, nice. Okay. And so the, oops, so the rocket would shoot out of there. I might test that in this video. Might as well. Okay. So what is this? Um, this is a handle. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So these handles here. Um, I guess these tops the the, the spring-loaded missile launcher will also fit fit on there I guess let's see yeah like that okay so if I wanted to um, oh yeah okay so <laughs> you can use it like a little uh, missile gun here you know you grip it and you can aim at your friends and fire missiles into their faces so uh, yeah okay that's unique and interesting there are some surprises with this vehicle. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, what do we have here? Uh, step nine. Oh, it, uh, on step nine, it actually wants us to put one of the rockets into the rocket launcher. So uh, let's go ahead and do it. The instructions actually tell us to test it. So I guess we will. Let's clip these off. There are four of these little little rockets. They are all identical. And yeah, my blade is getting really dull. It should cut through that with no problem. So I may have to replace my blade on this. There we go. That's three. All right, and that's four. All right. Okay, so it tells us to... It tells us to test these, so let's do that. Let's fire it at the box, and let's see. Yeah, let's do it like that. Now let's see how well this works. All right, I'm trying to angle this in a way that uh, it won't bounce off the box and fly off the table. Okay, so missile is in the launcher. I'm supposed to push down on this tab on the back to fire, and let's see how it works. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay, so that's step nine. Um, and let's see. 
step 10 is string attachment. String, I didn't see any string. Uh, let's see here, is this supposed to have string? Because it doesn't have any string. Am I supposed to supply my own string? Tie one end of string included to one control handle as shown. Fit other end of string through the guideway. And you know what? Hey, no string in here. How about that? Okay, so there, this is something that I will have to um, fix, uh, or I'll have to basically get some string for it um, before I can even test that feature. So, so much for that idea. I uh, cannot test the pulley feature um, until we do that. So I will just set it aside for now. Uh, it's got two of these handles and a pulley that looks like it attaches to this bar here. And you just run some string through it and you can, you know, slide the razor blade along the string. It's kind of a neat idea, but um, it's missing a piece. It is definitely missing a piece. Um, I don't know if that was supposed to be in the factory sealed bag or not, or if it was just supposed to be loose in the box. But whatever it was, uh, it wasn't there. Um, so I did notice that uh, the vehicle has some... Um, universal dumbbell shaped pegs here for the rockets so you can store them when they're not being used by the spring-loaded launcher so I'm gonna put these on here uh, just so they can have a place to stay and they actually are not fitting too well there we go it's a tight fit on those one two three and four top and bottom all on one side this is an asymmetrical vehicle, um, which is fine. Um, gives it an unusual look. Okay. And re really, we're almost done. Uh, that is the main vehicle. Um, the only piece we have left now is, uh, let's see, the, uh, what is this thing called? The rescue backpack. Oh, and I don't have a figure handy to show you how the rescue backpack works. I might pause this video and go grab a figure. It's, it's interesting. Um, go grab a figure and show you how it works. So let's try to cut this off without slicing my hand open. That would be nice. There we go. All right, this thing, I'm just going to have to toss this thing. That's This is old and no good anymore. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pause this for a second uh, and grab an action figure so I can show you how uh, this uh, rescue hook thing works. Okay, I wanted to use a 1994 figure and the first figure I grabbed from my 1994 bin was Flint version 4 uh, and that will work just fine. Um, so there is a back peg on this uh, and you just peg it on the figure's back just like a backpack. Uh, try to get it on there as solidly as possible. That seems to work fine. And when Flint needs to be rescued, uh, he's not going to stand up too well with that on. Uh, but according to this, uh, you just basically uh, swing in and scoop him up on the skids. Now if you have the pulley uh, system um, working and the string going through it, you can fly this thing down with the pulley and snatch him up like that and rescue Flint. So, uh, not bad. I can see how that could be a fun play feature. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, nice little thing. Now can I get it off the figure? Ooh, that's... It does stay on quite solidly, and that's probably a good idea for something like this, where you're going to be picking it up, and it'll be, you know, flying around through the air. Uh, you, you don't want this to... You don't want the figure to come off of it uh, while the helicopter is flying it. So that... Uh, good job on that. That actually does stay on the figure quite well. So now, I believe we are down to the stickers. So uh, let's see, where the sticker... Uh, okay. One thing I noticed about these instructions uh, is that it's a lot smaller. This is a much smaller instruction sheet than we got in the 80s. And even the earlier 90, uh, 90s vehicles had um, 
uh, more instructions, larger instruction sheets than this. Uh, but okay, here we go. So let's do these stickers here. These are paper stickers, not the classic vinyl stickers. Uh, that's typical of the 90s. All right, label one, uh, this um, razor blade emblem. There are two of them, and they, it looks like they peel up pretty readily. Um, and this is supposed to go right smack on the nose. And let's see if we can line it up pretty good. Not make it too wonky. Oop. Oh, okay. Careful now. That's not too bad. Okay. There is the first sticker right there on the nose. And let's see. What next? Okay. Um, another one of those uh, number one labels goes on the pulley system. Uh, and which way? This way? Yeah. Okay. So why not? Let's do that. Get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and peel that one off. And this one's supposed to go right here. And I suppose that's helpful because you wouldn't necessarily have this attached to the helicopter all the time. Uh, if you weren't using that play feature, you would pop this off and maybe put it somewhere in a box or something. And uh, the fact that it actually says razor blade on it makes it uh, easy to remember what toy it goes to. So that's not bad. All right, label number four. Uh, let's go ahead and finish putting the labels on the, the pulley system since I have it here. Label number four is a small G.I. Joe logo. Uh, so let's peel that off. Okay, be careful with that. And that just goes here. Try to get it straight. That's pretty straight. That's one side. Uh, the same thing on the other. All right. Wonder what happened to that string? Now that's gonna bother me. This thing was factory sealed yet not complete. So do I actually want to track down vintage string? Probably not. I will probably just get some generic uh, generic string to use with the play feature. All right, that's done and out of the way. Oh, how do I, I do want to see how well it snaps onto this bar. It's got three teeth on it, uh, and it snaps onto this bar right here on the top. So let's see. It should snap on pretty easily. Ooh, or not. Ah, there we go. Yeah, and that's a really good thing that black plastic flexes some, so that's that's good. And it does stay together, that's good. And the blades spin freely under it. Uh, it it's not bad. Um, you know, even with the pulley on, I, I might even leave the pulley on. It's not too intrusive. It doesn't get in the way of the blades or anything. It is kind of a big thing up there on top, um, but it's not terrible. Um, I, I can live with that, so I'll just leave it on. Okay, what next? Um, I'm trying to get the boring stuff out of the way, so let's do uh, this. Uh, let's see. These grip things have some labels um, that go on them. Label 8. What's label 8? Uh, where is label 8? Oh, it's just these little American flags. Is that it? They actually made little American flag stickers for these grip thingies. Um, I don't really know why they needed stickers for those at all. It's not really, doesn't seem very important to me. But it does say label eight. Is that it? No, that's not it. Where's label eight? No, label eight is, uh, label eight is this other GI, they want me to waste these awesome G.I. Joe logos on these things. Um, I do not approve. I don't approve of that at all. In fact, change my mind. I'll do that. Sorry, I'll do that last. Uh, let's move on to uh, better stuff. Uh, all right, there's label five, which is, it has three smaller 
razor blade emblems. And let's see, one of them goes here, right behind the cockpit. Let's see, looks like it fit right there pretty well. So there's that. And the same thing on the other side. Okay, carefully now. Putting them at a slight angle because there's a detail on the fuselage that uh, makes it look like it should go at that angle. And it's nice, I like it. So there's that. And then another one goes right there on the body where it attaches to the tail. So far these stickers are not bad. I, I think they are fine. Um, pretty cool stickers. And they do enhance the look of the vehicle a bit. So nice. All right. Uh, label three. These kind of orange and black stripey labels go on uh, the helicopter blades. Let me see exactly how those go so I can do it right. That's interesting. Okay. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. There's one. All right, that's too wide. These are too wide for those blades. Is that really how it's supposed to go? That's how it says. But if I put it on that way, then it will cover part of the uh, molded in detail. Um, if it went on the bottom of the blades, it would work fine. Okay, uh, I've encountered this on some other 90s vehicles where it asks you to put stickers over um, part of the detailing, and I don't know what they were thinking, but I'm going to do it the way they tell me to. I'm going to try to line it up. Oh, this is going to be a pain. This is going to be a pain. I do not approve of this, but there it is. Repeat three more times. All right. This is riveting stuff, isn't it, folks? All right. Uh, and I thank you for joining me for these. Uh, um, I enjoy doing these, and. Um, I hope it's not too tedious or boring for everyone out there. Uh, certainly isn't a toy review, and that is my bread and butter here. But on this particular week, uh, to do, I didn't have the time to do what I was planning on doing, and I didn't really have a substitute, so um, I just had to change plans. And we'll still get to that thing I was going to do, but I'll have to do it at a future date. Okay, there are those orange and black striped stickers on the propeller blades. It does kind of look pretty cool when you spin them. That's not bad. Uh, it's just that the way they go on, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But there it's done. Uh, let's see, what do we do next? Oh, label two, a rescue arrow sticker. Okay, so those go on the side of the canopy. Right. Ah, huh. Okay, the blades get in the way a bit. A little tricky. But it goes right there. Right there. And the next one. I do love putting on these stickers. And uh, thanks to Mike Lopez, I'm going to go ahead and give Mike a shout out for sending me that boxed Sea Ray, which I very much enjoyed assembling. There was a little hiccup on it, but uh, not a bad experience at all. Um, 
Uh, sometimes it's just tricky to put together these old toys. We're dealing with old plastic, um, and uh, you know, sometimes it's not as easy as it would have been, you know, if it was fresh out of the box, you know, 28 to 35 years ago. Um, but, uh, but usually you can still get them together. Okay, the, all right, those American flag stickers are number six. And the number six label goes on here. Let's see exactly where it goes. It goes, okay, on this side it goes back here. Okay, there we go. All right, little American flag sticker there. And this one goes on the other side. In the last live stream, um, I was rudely interrupted by cicadas that were very noisy because, and I was doing the live stream uh, outside. Well, I can hear them right now. I'm inside right now and they're making a hell of a racket. Um, so, okay, label seven, what's label seven? Uh, label seven are these step stickers and they go where? They go Okay, they go on the skids. All right, let's just peel that off. I'm trying to, after I put the stickers on, I'm trying to show you where they go uh, because I have to do it on my side and the camera is not on my side, it's on your side. So you can't always see exactly what I'm doing. So I'll try to make sure to pause and show you after each step. Okay, let's see, step stickers on the skids. Trying to put them as close to exactly where the instruction sheets say for them to go. All right. Okay, just two more. On the other side, we're almost done. We're about down to those G.I. Joe logos that have to go on the those grip things. And I gotta say that that's I don't like that. Uh, there is not a G.I. Joe logo on the vehicle proper. G.I. Joe logos on this pulley assembly, but if you take the pulley assembly off, there's no G.I. Joe label on it. Um, and that is uh, an odd choice, I have to say. Um, so, yeah, we're down to these, and um, the only way they will go is, uh, is uh, vertically. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's waste these perfectly good G.I. Joe stickers uh, on these grip things that most of the time you won't use. Uh, you'll throw in a box and probably lose. Um, I guess this is probably the only indication you have that these grip things even go to a G.I. Joe toy uh, because they're basically just blank. Uh, I did notice that they have um, dumbbell shaped pegs uh, so you can peg the missiles on there um, and like uh, I showed earlier you can put the spring-loaded missile launcher on there so I guess you can have the missiles as well and just use them as like spring-loaded guns with your extra ammunition pegged on there. Um, it's a nice try for uh, a little extra bonus feature but uh, to me the the main function of them would be to work with the pulley system. All right, Which I can't show you as stated before because I don't have the string. There it is. The last label is on. The razor blade is fully assembled. That was my unboxing and assembly of the 1994 G.I. Joe razor blade helicopter. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was an adequate substitute for a full review this week. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't have a full review ready for you this week. I just didn't um, have what I needed uh, and have the time to put together the review that I wanted to do. 
I don't like taking unscheduled breaks like that. I like to join all of you every week uh, with a more G.I. Joe content and more G.I. Joe reviews. I enjoy that very much, and so I'm sorry I couldn't do that this week. Uh, but um, I do all want to thank everyone for all of your kindness and your support in these difficult weeks. Um, but if we persevere, we will make it through this. We will get back to normal. We've got a ways to go before we can get back to normal, but I'm doing everything I can to, um, to be in a place where I can join you every week and give you the kind of content that you expect and deserve. Uh, so I want to thank everyone who watches these videos, uh, and I want to thank all of my patrons. If you like this channel and you'd like to support it more, please check out my Patreon page. I'm on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. That's all for this week. I will be back next week with a full G.I. Joe toy review. I'm working on it. I hope you will enjoy join me then. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.